Being self-contained is a great help to us as it gives us greater flexibility when it comes to choosing where we can stay for the night. But what does it actually mean? Stick with us to see what key features help us to make the most of our van. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. Not being limited to staying on campsites opens up a wider opportunity for places to stay, but there are some key facilities you'll need in your van to make the best use of airs and stopovers rather than relying on campsites. If you've not already seen our video explaining what an air is and how the campaign for real airs is helping in the UK, then check it out up here or the link in the video notes. In this video, we'll talk about what we needed in our van to give us the flexibility to use them. Let's start with the most uncomfortable topic, the toilet. These are our onboard facilities, which are similar to most camper vans and motorhomes. Our toilet is permanently fitted, but there are portable toilets that some smaller camper vans may use. But the principle is still the same. The tank or cassette has suitable chemicals or composting material to store the waste safely. This means that we don't always need to have access to campsites or public toilet facilities. With four of us in the van, we can usually go for three to four days before we need to empty the toilet cassette, which is always done at an official chemical toilet emptying point or at home into a regular toilet. While we're in the washroom, here's our sink, which also becomes our shower. The idea of washing in a river may be exciting, but it's not something either we would want to do or most locals would want to see. This also goes for dishwashing and food preparation for which we have our kitchen sink. Our sinks and showers are fed from the onboard water tank mounted under the van, which holds 70 litres of fresh water and we have a water heater that runs on gas. When it comes to pulling the plug, the waste water, often called grey water, is stored in another 70 litre tank mounted under the van. Again, this is only ever emptied at a grey water emptying point or at our waste water point at home. Remembering that surface water drains tend to go to rivers or beaches and all waste water should go to the water treatment plants. Most airs and stopovers have rules where you cannot have anything outside your van and don't have a means to connect to electricity. So there are a few things that we needed. Our LPG tank in the rear compartment of our van provides the gas we need for cooking, heating, hot water and our fridge. And our leisure batteries that power all our electrical gadgets, these batteries are recharged from the solar panel which is permanently mounted on the roof of the van. We've no need for an external gas bottle, a noisy polluting generator, freestanding solar panels or a mains electric hookup. Our cooking facilities are all inside the van, which means we can cook whatever the weather without disturbing anybody. Our fridge allows us to carry some fresh food with us, but as you can see, it isn't huge, which usually means we have to use the local shops to stock up. Doing this and visiting local restaurants helps us to experience local specialities and spend money in the local economy. When it comes to dry waste, we have two bins, one for normal rubbish, and one for recycling. We always make sure that we have enough room to take all our waste home, just in case local facilities aren't available or are overloaded. Finally, the most fundamental thing is having enough room for everybody when seating and sleeping. Though, as you can imagine, we do prefer to spend our days out of the van enjoying the local hospitality and amenities. I hope that has given those of you looking to expand your choice of places to stop some ideas of what you'll need and also reassure anyone that is worried that all camper vans and motorhomes do when visiting areas is cause mess and overload local facilities. As hopefully you've seen the vast majority of us are well equipped to cope ourselves but also like to add value and contribute to the local economy of the places we visit. Thanks for watching our video and as always if you have any questions or feedback please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful please like, share and consider subscribing.